Well, good evening, and uh, I'm going to be the last presentation of the evening, so um, you've been all patiently listening, so I'm going to make mine a little more interactive uh, to make sure that you uh, stay with us here till the end. So um, while Kelly is, uh, is bringing up the, the presentation, um, you know, when we talk about seawater desalination, obviously the, the, the issue uh, is the salt in the water. And, and just generally what we're talking about is the, the, the saltiness of ocean water is about 70 times that of your drinking, the drinking water that, that we receive through our taps. And, uh, you know, that, that notion of uh, the availability of that supply versus how salty it is and how undrinkable it is was, was best summed up in uh, a little quote from something called the rhyme of the ancient mariner, if anybody remembers that. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions as we go to see, see how you're doing and following this. Anybody remember who the author of that rhyme of the ancient mariner is? I'll give you a hint. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Coleridge, so. Um, there's no literary types in the audience tonight. So let me go on and talk about the, the desalination process and, and just to give you an orientation, uh, the, the heart and soul of this process is reverse osmosis membrane technology. Just as Kathy just talked about, it is the heart and soul of any process that removes salt or, or really uh, very fine, very small impurities from, from water. And so. Uh, in the case of desalination, what we're talking about is, is that we bring in two gallons of water from the ocean. Uh, those, ga those waters first go through a pretreatment step where all of the suspended particles are removed from the water, similar to what Kathy talked about in terms of a, of a uh, microfilter, an ultrafilter type of a process. Then that water is, is devoid of any suspended particles. It then moves into the reverse osmosis membrane process where the salts can be separated uh, from the water. The, uh, the, the process it, itself, uh, the, I'll talk a little bit more about the membrane material itself, but the process requires a significant amount of pressure. In order to reverse the natural process of osmosis, you need to pressurize this water to about a, over a thousand pounds per square inch. It then it forces the water molecules through the uh, membrane process then that water is actually, as Kathy points out, when it comes out, it is almost pure water. And so we need to add some minerals back into that water and condition it before it actually goes out into the distribution system. And that's what you see in the graphic there. Uh, the reverse osmosis membrane element itself that's used for desalination, uh, if it's, is, is really almost rolled up like, like you roll up a poster. And it has the consistency of um, photo paper, and let's see, given where we are, that you would put into your HP printer. <laughs> so, uh, and and uh, this, so, so if you think about that kind of consistency, that's what the membrane feels like. And it's separated by some nylon spacers, and it's rolled up uh, like a poster, and basically what happened, basically, you're, you're left with a, these elements that are, that are eight inches in diameter, about 40 inches long, and are rolled up so tightly that, that in the latest generations of membranes, there is about 400 square feet of membrane area rolled up, into the, rolled up tightly into those elements. And, and that then is, I'll go to the next picture here. This is the, the uh, picture of what a modern desalination plant looks like. And those membranes are, are in these, uh, these are called vessels, and there's about seven or eight of those membranes laid side by side in there. And then these are just arrayed in these big racks, and that's how the, that's what it looks like, and, and it essentially does what we talked about earlier. So why desalination? Why even, uh, why pursue it? Uh, it's, one of the keys is that it's a high reliability, and it's a high volume, potentially high volume supply. Uh, and as compared to some of our other supplies, such as groundwater, we're a little more limited in how much water we can actually get out of the groundwater basins here in San Diego County. 
uh, we can get some, some fairly high volumes of water from desalination. It's not a magic bullet. We can't solve all of our water supply issues with desalination, but we can certainly produce a, a substantial quantity of water that, that can go a long way to bolstering the reliability of our supply. Um, I'm going to ask another question here. Uh, since, since there are um, obviously a number of people in here that have probably traveled different places in the world, where do you think the largest seawater desalination plant using reverse osmosis is located? Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a good guess. I heard Australia is a good guess. Israel. It's Israel. Israel. It's Israel. Israel has uh, actually three of the largest uh, reverse osmosis plants in the world. Uh, the, um, the Ashkelon plant, the Hedera plant, and then soon to be eclipsed by the Sarek plant, which is actually about 113 million gallons per day. Somebody mentioned Australia. Australia, five years ago, had zero desalination plants. It now has uh, either online or getting ready to come online a total of six. And they've gone from zero to uh, capacity in, in, a, in a year or so of about 300 million gallons a day. Arguably, no country has had to deal more with the impacts of drought and climate change, as has Australia, and they've moved aggressively to develop desalination to bolster the reliability of their water supply for their, uh, for their coastal regions, Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, uh, Sydney, uh, Brisbane. The other, thing, the other point I want to make here is, is something that, that uh, Toby and Kathy both, both alluded to and we talked about in the, in the graphs earlier, and that is that uh, the, uh, the, the cost of desalination is in line with our other options when it comes to local supplies. And so, it, you know, when, as we look forward into the future, we're looking at a similar cost range for all of these, these local supplies. And that's just the pure cost. That's not looking at avoided costs and incentives and other things that might bring the cost down. That's all part of the business decision that, that uh, your water agencies take into account when decisions about supplies are made.